Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the George Meyer Show, where our purpose here is to investigate, evaluate, and inform, bringing you the truth, because as uncomfortable as the truth might be, it's the thing that's going to set you free. And we're going to start off to the, 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 today with uh, uh, downtown businessman Ken Brown, who we're going to talk about the Mound Cemetery. And it's been a hot issue in the, in the studio here already. Uh, Ken, it looks like the uh, the Meredith Funeral Home wants to take a portion of Mount Cemetery and turn it into 20 new burial sites. But it appears there's some question is there might be something there already that, that shouldn't be disturbed. So what, what's, what's the latest story on that? Well, what's your opinion? Well, here's what I put together. Uh, the, the Meredith family has been a part of our community for generations. They have been very, very respectfully burying people in our community for all of these generations. I have never had a discussion with anybody where they did anything that was untoward with their handling of the remains and the and the ceremonies related to uh, the people that they've taken care of. The fact that the family did the research, checked out an area, found out that there's an area that is not a mound shaped like an animal, it's a circle. It's a circle that had a hitching post on it because that's where they used to tie up the horses when they still took the, uh, took the uh, bodies out to be buried in um, horse-drawn vehicles. Obviously, we don't use horse-drawn vehicles at Mount Cemetery anymore, so this little circle has had an evergreen tree growing out of the middle of it for 60 or 70 or 80 years, and it's huge. And actually, the tree looks like it's rather unhealthy and needs to come down. Um, so the, uh, uh, in the idea of the layout, you've got this kind of little roundabout circle that is, I don't know what animal. I don't know if that was maybe a Native American blowfish. I don't think there was blowfish 10,000 years ago in this area, so I don't think it was that. Maybe it was a turtle with no legs, I don't know. But one thing is, the Meredith family has offered to pay the expenses of investigating archeologically this particular site to find out whether or not there are any remains in that uh, or not. Okay. You may or may not know, when the Piggly Wiggly, the former Piggly Wiggly, and apparently the future uh, grocery store uh, across the way there, or directly across from the uh, cemetery, that ground may have had uh, additional burial mounds and we put a parking lot over it and a grocery store. Now I'm not saying that we should bulldoze every historical site uh, that there is, I just think that we get a little bit hysterical sometimes. Some people are saying, you don't know what's under there so you can't dig. Well, we don't know what's under lots of places. Uh, and there is no mapping where we can go around with the uh, fluorescent paint and mark, well, here's where a body was and here's where the cable company goes well, through. Well, that's true. I mean, when you, go, when you go, go years back, people were buried pretty much anywhere. They might, wherever right. they, they lay, it was, this was all wide open fields. And there were, maybe was no designated place to bury bodies. And right. Just, so, if, so if they and, the, and you're saying that, that there could be randomly bodies almost any place. Potentially, right. So then, then you can say, oh, you can't bury anybody anywhere. Now you've got this double thing going. You've got one, oh, you can't bury anybody there. You can't use it because it's a sacred ground and blah, blah, blah. Well, the yeah, whole thing is essentially more, sacred. And then you've got the other people who are saying, oh, no, rather than you know just $20,000 worth of... Uh, worth of burial plots here. We could actually build a columnar tower here and we could you know, raise 100,000, 200,000 uh, in, filling that, in filling that tower with people's remains and ashes and so forth. Okay. So which is it? I think right now a lot of people are using everything that they can to beat up on John Dicker, whether that's fair or not. I think using the Meredith family and this particular issue just to beat up on the Dicker uh, because you don't like his politics is silly and ridiculous. Well, no, but some of this is coming from outside the city of the Racine. Well, that's because well, when, of, when there were people came in here from from wherever they were coming, other parts of the United States, saying coming in with these documents showing that this could be actual an actual burial ground. In mm -hmm. fact, I think one of them did say it was a burial ground. I don't think that's attack on Dickert. Uh, what they're showing is that the way it was laid out is the way that it's laid out and you can't do it any other way because that's the way that it was laid out. If they had meant to lay that out as a place to bury people, then you could have. Uh, although, but it was a hitching post for a specific reason. When they laid okay. it out as a cemetery, they had an expectation. It's now over, it's actually overused, it's almost full, uh, and a few people have been doing research to find out specific spots that might still be available to create a new burial site. Now what happened, what happened to, there were some people out there that were going to check the ground, they were going to do whatever it was, drilling into the ground. Just take a core well, sample. Yeah, why, why, did, why did they back off on Because that? a bunch of protesters showed up and said, you don't know what's under there and you can't even check to see what's under there because we know that there might be something under there. So I'm sorry, that's not the way we should set policy on whether we're going to use our burial ground for burying people. And let's face it, the Meredith tribe has been here for three generations, taking very good care of our dead in our community, and they should have every opportunity to at least investigate it, and they shouldn't have to face that level of, 
of uh, angst because people are mad at John Dicker and company. Okay, all right. Well, we thank you for that for that uh, viewpoint. You said you had a, a, an announcement that you wanted to make. Well, actually, uh, I wasn't aware of this uh, before, but I started apparently about two or three years ago. Dancing with Our Stars is a local version of dancing, and one of my Facebook friends said, "Hey, Ken, you should do this," and I thought, "No, I'm not going to do it." Um, but anyway, it's going to be November second. It is thirty dollars per person. It's a uh, it will be at Racine Memorial Hall, and it's for a fundraiser for uh, the Batters Women's Shelter, whose name escapes me at the moment. I'm sorry. Now this is this for the dancing thing. And this for the is, dancing. Is, is that and, hat? Should you be wearing this that hat is, to make this announcement? This is going to be my strategically dipped below one eye. Hat yeah. event, so <laughs> I hope everybody can make it. Uh, tell your friends about it. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, cash bar and thirty dollars admittance, and the money goes to a really good cause. So. Okay, All right, well, thank you for that. Thank you, right. Have a great day. And we will uh, end off this segment here. We're going to take a break and then come back with Robin Coventry and Preservation Racine, and she's going to tell us how some practical things about Preservation Racine. All right, stay tuned. <laughs> 